Hello students, uh, this is Professor Sansom. I've had some questions about how to find the order of a reaction with respect to a particular reactant and how that relates to the rate law and how we can find the rate constant using that information. So I'm going to solve one of the problems from your textbook 13.62, so this is at the end of chapter 13. And we have a chemical reaction uh, between hydrogen and nitrogen monoxide uh, and we've done several experiments, three experiments here where we have varied the concentrations of hydrogen and of nitrogen monoxide and measured the rate of the reaction. And our goal is to find the rate law and the rate constant. So the first thing that we should recognize is that there's a form to the way that we write the rate law. And that is we should say the rate equals the rate constant times the concentration of each of these reactants raised to the order of reaction with respect to that reactant. So in this case, X will be the order with respect to hydrogen and Y will be the order with respect to NO. Uh, so this is our general form of the rate law expression that we want to use. And then we should identify which trials are gonna be helpful to us. When we're finding the order with respect to a particular reactant, the easiest way to do it is to have a situation where everything else is constant and the only thing that's changing is the one reactant that we're interested in. So for example, if we're looking at nitrogen monoxide, we can see between trial one and trial two, we doubled the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, but we kept that concentration of hydrogen constant. So we'll wanna use trials one and two in order to find the order with respect to nitrogen monoxide. So the way that I'm gonna do this is just to say that um, the ratio of the rates is going to equal the ratio of the rate law expression. So we're gonna write this all out. The rate of experiment two over the rate of experiment one is gonna equal and this will just be the rate law here, except we're gonna substitute in our concentration of hydrogen for our second experiment, that's why I put the two down there, and our concentration of NO from our second experiment. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom, except our hydrogen concentration will be from the first experiment, and our NO concentration also from the first experiment. Okay, now that we have this expression written out where we've got the ratio of the two rate laws, um, what we're going to do is cancel out anything that's constant to simplify the expression. So we know, for example, our rate constant doesn't change, so we can co cancel that out. And in this case, because our concentration of hydrogen is constant, we can also cancel that out. So you don't have to worry about that. So now we have sort of a simpler expression that rate two over rate one equals the concentration of NO from the second experiment divided by the concentration of NO from the first experiment, both raised to the Y power. And we can actually simplify this a little bit more and say uh, this fraction raised to the Y power or to the order of that reaction. And uh, now we can uh, start to look at what happens when we plug in the numbers uh, from our experiments. So for our rate 2, we had 1.134 times 10 to the minus 2 for our rate. And for rate 1, we had 2.835 times 10 to the minus 3. And this is going to equal 0.6 over 0.3 raised to the y power. So now we can start to look at this with numbers. We can plug this into our calculator. 1.134 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by 2.835 times 10 to the minus 3. That gives us 4. So we get 4 equals, and this will be two, that ratio is two, to the y. Now, at this point, many of you will be thinking, 
that's easy. I know that 2 squared equals 4, so y equals 2. Okay? And um, usually, that's what we're going to do in this situation. In fact, we can even look at the two trials and say, okay, I doubled the concentration of nitrogen monoxide. What happened to my, or to my initial rate? And see that it quadrupled. So I doubled this, and the rate quadrupled. That's a sign that I'm going to end up with 2 to the y equals 4, and that y equals 2, or that it's a second order with respect to that reaction. So now we know that when we're writing our rate law, uh, we know a little bit more. We'll have rate equals k times h2 to the x times NO squared. So we found that it was second order with respect to NO. We can do a similar thing with the hydrogen. This time uh, we'll want to look at trials 2 and 3 where nitrogen monoxide is held constant, but we're doubling the concentration of hydrogen. We double the concentration of hydrogen, we double the initial rate, and so we know now that in fact our x is 1. Um, when we're writing the rate expression, we often don't include something that's to the first power, so uh, we'll just say h2 and then leave off the 1. Um, and now we have our rate law. When you write the rate law, you want to include rate equals k times this. It's not just one half of it. The rate law is an e equality or an, a complete expression, so um, it shouldn't be just half of it. Uh, that's not complete. So when you're writing that on an exam, for example, you want to make sure that you include both sides of the equation. Okay, now we have found our rate law from experimental data, and we need to solve for our rate constant. So we'll just take this equation, and we can solve algebraically that k is going to be the rate over the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of NO squared. And then we can just choose, for example, the first trial where we'll plug this in. So our rate was 2.835 times 10 to the minus 3 molar per second. Hydrogen was 0.35 molar. And NO is 0 0.30 molar. And that one is squared. Make sure that you don't forget that. Sometimes it's easy to forget the squared uh, concentrations if you're rushing through it. Okay, and then uh, we can solve this and we'll end up with k equals 0 0.09. And the units here are going to be per molar squared. Um, there's three molars on the bottom and one molar on the top, so there'll be two left over on the bottom, so per molar squared, and then per second. Um, and that's our rate constant for that reaction. Uh, I showed you this process uh, here, but I also want to show you how to do it using logs um, instead of just thinking about it. And the reason is that sometimes the exponents are difficult to understand, uh, or the data is a little bit messy and it doesn't look like it's a whole number and you can't quite figure it out. So I'm going to start with this expression here. Um, and I'm going to bring this uh, bring this down. And what I'm going to do is take the log of both sides. So I'll have the log of the ratio of the rates, and that equals uh, the log of 0.6 over 0.3 to the y. Now, um, because of the rules of logarithms, uh, this y is actually going to come out front. So I'm going to get y times the log of 0.6 over 0.3. And I can calculate this in my calculator by typing this in. So I've got my ratio uh, 1.134 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by 2.835 times 10 to the minus 3 
And then I'll take the log of that answer and I get 0 0.602. And so then we'll have 0 0.602 equals y times the log of 0 0.6 over 0.3, and that is 0 0.301. And so now y equals 0 0.602, over 0 0.301, so in other words, y equals 2. In this case, doing all of that work with the logs is sort of uh, not necessary um, because we can see that 2 to the second power equals 4. Um, but in cases where you have strange exponents, like if you have something that's to the 1 half or something that's to the negative 1, um, all of those things are possible and uh, Sometimes you have to do it with the logs in order to figure it out. So uh, that is, in summary, how we find the rate law and the rate constant given experimental data. I hope it's helpful. Thanks.